Okay, here we go. Having a little technical problem, so uh, you can still hear. If you can hear, just say yes down there. Yes, thank you, Rachel. Yes, yes. And we'll see what's happening. So let me, let me see what Lynn says. She had a prayer request here. Uh, Jeff. Oh, so a missionary in Botswana whose wife died this morning. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's 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 begin. We'll pray for her, and uh, y'all also pray for uh, a friend of mine that we were actually praying for last week. If you remember, uh, the lady that had uh, pancreatic cancer. Yeah, Donna. She actually died about two hours after our class last week, and uh, it really wasn't expected at all. And I get home from after this class, literally, and I get a text from her husband saying, hey, pray for her right now. And he hardly ever does anything quite like that. And uh, he told me what happened later. She uh, got up. She was always a very put-together kind of lady. And she got up and went and took a shower and came back and just said that she was having a hard time breathing. And... uh, and they rushed her to ICU, and she died uh, shortly thereafter, literally. And so, um, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's a good thing and a hard thing, like the missionary right here. You don't quite understand some of it. And then, uh, literally about three hours ago, uh, yeah, somebody's mic is on. I don't know who that is. Uh, yeah, mine sneaked back on. It was on. Turn it off. Okay. And so... Uh, we had another lady that died here in the church about two hours ago. One of the older ladies, just precious little saint. And uh, so I think that's four people who have died in the last two weeks. <laughs> so anyway, it's sort of that type of church anyway, that type of environment. I think Kimberly, my dad, is better. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, let's pray together. So, Father, I thank you. And, um, Lord, we rejoice in the life you've given us. We rejoice in that transition when we go from this life into your presence forever. And Father, we do just continue to uh, thank you for the peace that you've given here. Lord, we just a couple of my friends here whose spouses have died the last couple of weeks. They just testify repeatedly that you're the ones that's given them peace, that you've given them strength, that there's even joy in the midst of sorrow, that there's joy in the midst of mourning and, and wondering and the questions that come. Lord, I pray that you will do the same uh, for Jeff and his family right there and, um, and the home going of his wife. Uh, Lord, we even pray that you will grant unto them uh, understanding. You know, that's the hard thing so often, just, you know, what's happened, what's going on here. And I just ask that you will do that and that you will just pour forth your blessing upon them. Now, Lord, I just pray that you will uh, just be with us now tonight. Thank you for what you've uh, revealed to us this week. And I just ask that you will show us even more now in your word and we thank you in jesus name amen amen and uh, lord thank you for bringing lynn back so lynn it's good to have you here uh can you tell us quick how your uh, trip was how your journey was um it was great um i'm not ready to turn around and say i want to go right back but give me a few few months and i probably will be we did um four pastors conferences two in places where i had been before two in new places and then um so the pastor church leader kind of conferences when i go i teach uh, discipleship the importance of studying the bible and then for the pastors to be teaching their people how to study the word and um and it was fabulous as always um i saw some very 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 poor areas that I think have been the worst that I've ever seen. Yeah, but, mm. but you go and then you truly appreciate when you have hot water and running water. Yes. For that matter. But, <laughs> but it was great. Oh. Thank yeah. you for y'all's prayers. Oh, well, we'll continue praying for you and those that you saw. Uh, you have no idea what type of impact that has with the, within the kingdom, you know? Uh, we yes. Perhaps we'll never that's know. True. And that's all right. Uh, that's all right. I'm not supposed to. I don't have to know. Exactly. 
And do as Jan was just saying, do pray for like Richmond. There was two tornadoes that just went through a couple hours ago, right there. And uh, actually watched a video of one earlier. And uh, my daughter Lene, if you're here in the state, she probably seen all this stuff in Newburn, North Carolina. That's where she lives. And uh, so they're they're dry. The, the flooding got within about a half mile or a mile of their house. But they got a lot of church members whose houses are underwater, and they have spent the last two or three days just going here, there, and everywhere, ripping carpet out sweeping things out and just doing what the body of Christ is supposed to do but there's actually I think probably going to be greater destruction even south of there it just uh, I don't know how I, last I heard I think they've had 30 inches of rain there in Newburn and there's other places that I think may have had even more so is uh, and there's just I mean the interstates are shut down the interstates are flooded up yeah south of Asia there's some serious things that went through there at the same time the same exact time what do y'all think of all that uh, is this just something that is uh uh, normal is this abnormal is this uh, signs of something you think that things are speeding up are they really speeding up or is it just the fact that we have communication skills now that we're able to uh, know about things like this literally in a real-time way yeah Kimberly I'm sort of inclined to think that way too that birth pains uh, which is you know that, that there's things that will be little signs and stuff like that and so uh, and I tell you what, uh, there's things that are happening here stateside, you know, politically speaking, that uh, will have impact worldwide. Uh, there's things that I've just begun to learn in the last year, I want to say, that's really been accelerated uh, in the last three or four months. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get together some other time, uh, not during a lesson time and not being recorded and just chat about some of these things <coughs> because they're... Uh, extremely important and God is actually raising up his people uh, to speak into the situations and to give understanding of situations and uh, and that kind of thing so yeah okay. book of time uh, yeah we, we may do that let me think about a time we might be able to get together um, and just sort of chat about some things and uh, particularly two or three things that I've run across that I, that I have personally found useful um, and I'm thinking that uh, that it's actually of God that to give us insight and to prepare his people for that which is coming right now what's happening what's occurring and what is yet to come so well yeah. Dale after my trips into Africa and you see people that are just so hungry for the word of God that it's not just a things happening in America but you see the church rising in other areas of the world as well yeah 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 well uh, in, in our situation it's uh, you know people get so distracted by things and what's really happening is they're beginning to realize that there's a lot of idolatry in our lives that we would not call idolatry but it really is and if you're dependent upon anything else other than the most high God then it's idolatry you know uh, yeah, Rachel said those from East Africa are the ones that, that want to know the truth. And it's the same thing if, wherever we are, if we just keep prodding and prying open the doors. Uh, we were actually playing, uh, our band was playing Friday night at one of our regular places. And it's, a, it's an interesting little place. And it's, it's a family gathering kind of place that people at first don't believe is a family gathering, but it is. And there were a couple of couples from uh, the church I'm sitting in right now that were there. And they're great people. They're, they're leaders within the church. And we were just sitting there. I'd already, we'd set the equipment up. We had about 45 minutes, an hour before we actually started playing. And, uh, and I'm over here just talking to them. And one of them said something about something. And I said, well, it's like this. When you started talking about the kingdom of God. And they're really concerned about their grandchildren and what's going on with their grandchildren and what they're seeing happening within the church. Uh, at large and local too, uh, down to the current local church, and we were talking about it. And then these two ladies, it's a you know two couples, and the lady said, "What do we need to do to where we actually are living how we're supposed to and and doing what God wants us to do?" Now these folks, these two couples, are right around seventy years old, but they're you know they're vibrant, they're young, they're retired, you know, and but they realize that something is happening and something is stirring and that God wants to use them in the midst of that and I told him I said well it starts with what we're doing right now what we're doing right now sitting around this table talking about the things of God is really more the picture of church that you see in scripture 
than what we say church is. And but and and they're so hungry to know what the truth is. I had like I had three separate encounters today in about an hour and a half time like that where people just ask questions and want to know what the truth is. And there's a righteous frustration that they're not being taught, that they're not that they don't know what to do, you know. Yeah, yeah, this is doing church right now. This is the body of Christ, sure it is. And this is the body of Christ extended. And so just to have the mindset that regardless of um, where you are and what you're doing, that this is the body. You know, that's the big thing that we're seeing in James. What did we see last week? When you're just doing that overview of James. The whole idea that you're just not sitting there in a the pew, just hearing about the Word of God, but you're doing what related to the Word of God? You're being a doer, right? That you're doing this thing. And uh, down east where Aaron and Lene are and all these things, all these churches, they actually got on their Facebook pages and they were all saying the same kind of thing. Hey, we're not having services this week. Y'all get out there. We're doing it. Okay. One church is a clearing house for this. Another church is a clearing house for that. And, uh, you know, some of them were actually rescuing people. You know, this kind of thing. That you're actually doing the work. And, uh, you know, people are beginning to realize, wait a minute, there's something happening. And it's getting more and more that they're realizing that, um, how do I say this? If we're not careful, we're living in a Sadducee and a Pharisee type mindset to where we claim to know the Word of God. But remember what Jesus said to the Sadducees? He says, you don't know that you err. You don't know the Word of God and you don't know the power of God. And that's my greatest concern is that we really don't know and function and operate within the power of God. And so, uh, but I think the Lord's addressing that in all of our lives. So uh, tell me, what, what did you learn uh, out of the uh, first chapter? It was really the, we looked at the whole first chapter of James, but then we sort of focused in on the first, what was it, dozen verses, something like that. And we're going to look at the, net, the, the balance of it next week. But did anything happen to y'all while y'all were reading this chapter right here? Okay, why is that, Rachel? A fresh view on God's wisdom. It blew you away. <laughs> why is that? And anybody else, please jump in. Okay, isn't that great? Yeah, the thing about wisdom. There, there's all these uh, commands in, in this whole book, okay? All these things that quite often we don't think of commands. And what did he say about wisdom? How does wisdom come to us? Well, if we believe is one element, and what else? Wisdom is better than Google. Yeah. That's it. You ask God. You ask. Yeah. And how often we don't do that? Well, Jan just said, yeah. Yeah. Carol being that old precept eyed at heart just got the biggest kicks out of going back and looking at the words and the original meanings. No, there's tremendous value in that, isn't there? Yeah, isn't that the truth? We have the wisdom living inside us. And I know what you mean by that, you know, but it's, and when you say it's a wonderful resource. Uh, but what have we learned from John? It's even way beyond resource, right? What is it? You see that if you abide in this, that this is life. Okay? This is the life of the Lord. You know, and how that manifests itself. Um, Okay, yeah, uh, what, what did just Lynn say? Oh, something about the trials. Yeah, there we go. Um, the trials of our lives, we often think they're bad, not necessarily punishment for some deed, but not for good. That trials are seen as a what? A blessing. <laughs> so the first uh, verses 2 through 4 are about trials. What did you learn about trials? What are we supposed to do with them? Yes, Jan, asking in faith is terribly important. Well, and that's what Lynn was talking about, Rachel, walking in our knowledge so much. Uh, you know, anybody that goes off to a various uh, uh, sojourns or journey to Africa, they're always impacted by the fact that God moves in ways that he doesn't move in the Western world. And the bottom line is because 
they have faith because they don't have the blessing of the stuff that God has given us that we have made idols. You know? So Carol says, I've seen the analogy of testing like metals purified by fire, but I read one definition that said approved refers to approved as acceptable men in the furnace at adversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, you're supposed to endure the trials. Jan, yes, the, the great phrase, count it all joy. So Lynn wants to know verse 5, but if you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all men generously without reproach and it will be given to him. So does, it, does that just apply to wisdom or does it apply to what? Everything else Lynn wants to know. So what do y'all say? Okay, Jan says anything. You want to tell us why, Jan, or you decide on that side? <laughs> because he loves us and if we have anything that we need we can ask him that he will provide it for us does the scripture say that yeah there's several verses in other places that talk about that thing remember when Jesus said uh, whatever you ask for I will grant unto you if you ask in my name remember that we talked about that, and I think somewhere along in the John study, either in that and the cross references to it. But the idea is that you have the mind of the Lord, and that what you're asking is what the Lord wants to grant. Oh, sure we do. Yeah, and then we say, oh yeah, well I want this and I want that. Well, and Jesus, well God also deals with that. He deals with that in John, I think First John, where John says, you pray and you pray, and you don't receive, and the reason is you pray amiss. Isn't that a great little line? You pray amiss. And you're praying for your fleshly desires. So, you know, I want this house, I want this car, I want this maid, I want this, I want that. Yeah, and it's what the Lord desires to grant. It is what the Lord wants, not my wanter. Exactly, Jan. Yeah, very much so. So I think that verse 5 could apply uh, to asking of God. But even the asking of God, here he's specifically talking about, if you lack wisdom, then ask. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think it's a starting point because you go back to Proverbs 1. The first proverb deals with what? When the writer's talking to his son, those first five or six proverbs are, you know, a personification of wisdom. He says, pursuer, pursue wisdom, you know? But it's not just our wisdom, it's what you've been saying. It's God's wisdom all along. But from the beginning here in verse 2, what does he say about that joy? And you've mentioned it a little bit. He said to do what? To consider it joy, to count it all joy. What is that? What does that say? You've mentioned a couple of things about it. Anything else? I'm not. I'm not really fishing for anything. I'm just wondering. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Rachel. That that we have a decision to make. Okay, we have a decision to make. And, you know, to count it all joy when you, what, encounter various trials. You have a decision to make at that moment. Okay, we have a great example here. Uh, my uh, stuff wasn't working the way on this end that I wanted it to work tonight. And you say, well, is that a trial? Is that a thing? What did y'all learn about looking at that word trial right there? Yeah, it's just the definition of it. It's just a temptation. It's something that tries you. A putting to the test is uh, one phrase uh, that was used right there. And sometimes those things are allowed. Now, you go to trials, tribulations, persecutions as a ramping up of things. But sometimes just the simple things really are a trial because you're being tested as to how you're going to react. Okay? How are you going to react to it? Are you going to get irritated because your computer is not acting right? Are you going to get irritated because the Wi-Fi seems to be messed up and won't play nice with the Apple TV? I think that's what was happening a while ago on my end. Because I was doing some stuff with the Apple TV to show you up here and it didn't want to play. 
Okay, how are you going to act to that? How are you going to react? And those are all exactly what I've been saying several times. They're training grounds. Okay, they're testing grounds. Grounds. <laughs> well, I got Android. I got an Android phone sitting right here. I am a uh, Android geek, but uh, for my computer, I use the Mac. And what I was actually doing, that screen that y'all saw a while ago with the scripture verses up on it, that's actually on another screen over here on my computer. You know, I just thought about that. That's what I need to do. I could probably take care of that. Now, you may be thinking what a solution may be. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I have thought about trying Zoom, but I don't think it's the Hangouts is the problem. I think it's with the uh, the little rig I've got going right here is more the issue than anything else. I could be totally wrong with that. I have been wrong before. <clears throat> so what did Carol say so much better? Oh yeah, that, that it is hard uh, to say, well, thank you, Lord, because uh, this isn't working and I'm irritated. <laughs> but he's told us when these things happen to do what? <coughs> to count it all joy, to consider it joy. Uh, I know I've told you this before, but we actually did James here, uh, oh, I don't know how long, probably 15, 17 years ago. Lynn, I think it's when you and I both were still at the same church over here. And Jess Roberts, Jess and Mary Roberts were a precious little old couple that never grew old. They both are in glory now. They died in their late 70s or early 80s. And that verse so impacted him. And he was the kind of guy that was sort of a quiet kind of guy. But he would just repeatedly share of how that verse so impacted him. And his answer to everything was, count it all joy. <laughs> so Rachel says, we say thanks for the trial or in the trial. And yeah, yeah that, that's the question that comes up. Because it can become very flippant there. Do you sit there and, and thank the Lord uh, for cancer? So cancer just, uh, a good friend of mine died a week ago today by cancer. Yesterday afternoon, I was able to drive down close to Birmingham, about 30, 40 miles from here, and go to a friend's friend's house and baptize his friend. He's been to Bible studies for years and years. Faithful guy, I mean a believer like you would know, believe, knows the scripture, but he can't remember if he's ever been immersed He'd been sprinkled several times and thought he had been, but he wasn't sure, and he just wanted to be baptized. He's 78 years old and just had an arm taken off four months ago, cancer. And he's been diagnosed with lung cancer now. And he knows his time is short, and he's just rejoicing. And a half a dozen times yesterday, he looked at me and said, I still got a little more time. I still got some time. But he's in the frame of mind now of getting everything taken care of. So anyway, uh, do you give thanks for this tribulation? Do you give thanks for the trial? No, not necessarily, because you don't like this necessarily. But Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the midst of it. And that's what I think Rachel was saying a while ago. So let me back up, read a little bit what y'all been saying here. Let's try and see what that Rachel's not necessarily. Ah, oh, that's what y'all were saying. Yeah, that's exactly what y'all were saying. Yeah. So we have a decision to make. The count it all joy. Do y'all do that every time? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> now that's the bottom line there, Rachel. We need to, and that's what he's saying, we need to consider it to be an opportunity here. To be an opportunity. Okay. Can y'all still hear me? Please tell me you can. Testing one, two, three. Or did you lose me totally? Okay, here we go. Yay. Yay because of something Rachel said because of Rachel I think I figured something out thank you <laughs> I 
I think, thank you, and see if it actually works. <laughs> Yay! <clears throat> well, is that not a great example of how we must have one another? Yeah, exactly, community. She said something, and when she said it, I went, that's what the difference has been the last couple of weeks with something. And it just has to do with, you know, how you do a rig. <clears throat> thank you, <clears throat> Rachel. <clears throat> so, we do. Now, what are these various trials? Is it a trial <clears throat> to sit there and your electronics are not working right? Is it a trial to be craving chocolate and there's no chocolate in the house? Or lost your car keys? Oh my, how many divorces have come from that? <laughs> you know, I think it has to do sort of where we are in our faith and the thing that's that the Lord's wanting to put his loving hand upon because of what he says next. He's talking about these various trials. And what I've got on the screen right there is the King James, the American Standard, and the English Standard Version, and the Lexham. And it's just interesting to watch sort of the flow of things. Look what he says. Consider it all joy when you meet the, these various trials, when you encounter these various trials. Why? Because knowing the testing of your faith produces endurance. And I think that that's what we've been in so many times in our life. And our faith is being tested. So is the Lord really, is he tempting us to sin when he's doing that? To see if we're really believers? I think there you go, Lynn, yeah. Oh, you know, traffic in South Florida is an evangelistic thing, Kimberly. You know, you think this is bad, the lake of fire is going to be a lot worse than this. <clears throat> no, he never tempts us, that's right, he doesn't tempt us. But the testing comes to produce our faith, to test our faith, to produce endurance. And all these multitudes, I'm going to dare say hundreds of things that we encounter every week all boil down to, are you going to react to this and by faith? Are you going to live by faith in the midst of this? Or are you going to respond in the flesh? You know, how are you going to, to react to this? The whole things with trials. Uh, what, what did that word mean when y'all looked it up? The word trials. I think that's, that's it, Lynn. If there's something right there that the Lord is wanting to strengthen, okay, to strengthen, then he'll do that. The word actually means, and this is the thing I was trying to set up because I think I've got this way to work now. Yeah. It, it means an experiment, a trial, a temptation. Okay. Let me go down here. And if y'all don't have this software right here, you need to get it. It's totally free, and it's the coolest thing. Uh, this word study right here is not free. It's a little plug-in. It's the trial, the temptation to put on the test, okay? The idea is the purpose of proving someone. Now, what's in, proving your faith before who? And this is Zodiades right here. Never causing somebody to fall. Well, is it proving your faith before the Lord? Yeah, I use blue letter too. Uh, but this e-sword is just so cool for stuff. And I don't think the blue letter has the Zodiades as a free thing. It may. Yeah, I think you're, I think it's the yourself thing. Because if we come along and say, Oh, God's doing this to prove that you really have faith in Him, the way He can see what you're going to do. Now, He's done some things that look like that. Okay? Was it Abraham that he looked at after? Uh, was it after he sacrificed Isaac? He says, "Now that I know that you, now I know you love me." You know. Well, yeah, it definitely builds, Rachel. It builds and it builds, but I think it's probably even more for us, as we can, you know, all of us right now can sort of look back a few years and sort of see what's happened with the various trials and what the outcome has been and how the Lord has used those things. So we know that the testing of this faith produces endurance. Well, what does endurance do? So testing produces endurance. Uh, ESV says steadfastness. That's a good word. Postnatal depression, homelessness, joblessness, and no money. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> 
all those things. So Lynn said it's made her perfect. Is that what you're saying, Lynn? No, let endurance... <laughs> I know, don't you love English? Oh, gosh. Let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. What does that word perfect mean? I don't know if we looked that up or not. It means completed. It means to be made whole. Yeah. When does that occur? It talks about the sum of all the parts of a person. No deficiency. Yeah. Very good. So, do we ever reach that point while we're still alive? Yeah, isn't that sort of a cool thing? We'll see even more about that in uh, Hebrews, that body, mind, soul kind of thing. <clears throat> oh, you did. So what was the answer, Jan, if you knew I was going to ask it? All right. Well, the, the word right there <clears throat> is uh, how it, uh, teleo, teleios, I think that's how you say it, the Greek word. Okay, what did Philippians say about that? Okay, yes. Paul said he was what? That he hadn't arrived there yet to the perfect, and it's the same word, just different form of the same word, of completion, of perfect, but that he was pressing on, right? He was enduring to the end. He was being uh, steadfast in what he did. What did Ephesians say about that? Y'all looked up Ephesians 4.13. And boy, that Ephesians 4 passage, folks, is so important for the things that we were talking about while we were trying to work through the logistics a while ago that now we figured out, so I know what to do now. Yay. What did Ephesians 4.13 have to say about uh, the perfect? What word was translated there that way? The same word, teleios, and it was translated to being built up to a mature man, yeah, perfect man. Do you remember the context of Ephesians 4? Did anybody look at that? From like verses 11 to 12 on? We've talked about it several times. It wasn't in your homework or anything, but I think it's just really important. <clears throat> yeah, physical maturity in Philippians. Uh, work of service. Works, works of service by who? Really important here, ladies. Really important. Keep thinking. Oh, yeah, and I, I hate that translation. That's what it says. Uh, God's people, saints, hagios, the holy ones. When people think of saints, they're thinking of angels. You know, speaking of God's people. What about it? What about the works of service of God's people? And how does that come about? It's talking about the unity, you yeah. know? I know somebody's finally sitting there going, I want to go back over and look that up and see what he's talking about. <laughs> Who builds us up? How do we get built up? You're right. Eh, yeah, we do. But there's a way that God does it. The body of Christ, we build each other up. Yeah, 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 yeah. This particular passage in Ephesians 4 gives some insight, and then the, the balance of the scripture gives more insight. Something about his fullness, his Holy Spirit. If you back up, it says that the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, has given gifted, thank you, Lynn, has given gifts, and he's given gifted people. And it's the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd, the teacher, that the Lord has given these five gifted type of peoples. Not spiritual gifts per se. A lot of people want to teach that those are spiritual gifts per se. They're spiritually gifted individuals. And those spiritually gifted individuals are there for the purpose of equipping the saints for the work of the service of the kingdom. And if they do this until the uh, 
the people of the Lord are a mature man, this word right here, to the fullness of Christ. So the purpose of the gift, yes, is to equip the saints to do and to function in the unity of faith that we have. This goes to the thing we've talked about so many times before, one of my little pet peeves here, that we as the body of Christ reject portions of that that he has given to equip us. So we generally reject the apostle. We generally reject the prophet. Okay, oh, We'll let the evangelist come to town every now and then to speak to the choir, you know. In other words, to do what we're supposed exactly to do what we're supposed to. We literally reject it. So we're like a five-cylinder engine that we've unplugged two cylinders. And then we wonder why we're spitting and sputtering around, not going very fast. Now people will come along and they will preach and teach and write voluminous books about how that well all those things have ceased to be. That was just for the transition time of the first and maybe part of the second century. And we don't need that anymore. And all I have to say to that is that that is biblical theological foolishness. Because you do not see that from the Bible. They twist the Bible to try to make it say that kind of stuff. Because right here in Ephesians it says that we need those five things. function. It's not what Ephesians says. That's right. Until we reach to the fullness of Christ. And all you got to ask, I don't know how many groups I've asked this. Hey, have we reached the fullness of Christ? And every one of them go, no then why in the world are we rejecting the way that the Lord has designed for us to function and to live? I mean, it's a serious problem when you really think it through. It's a serious, serious problem. <coughs> you looked up some other passages real quick about trials. You looked up uh, Romans and a couple of things in Peter. Uh, what did y'all learn from those? Just real quick. Yeah, that's the thing that sort of hit me, Rachel. <laughs> you know, I can sit there and say, oh, I'm counting it all joy. I'm counting it all joy. <clears throat> but we're actually told to exult, that E-X-U-L-T, that just being rejoicing in, in the midst of tribulations and sufferings. And then Paul liked to, like, liked to write these lists related to that. What was it in, in Romans? I think the, the tribulations bring perseverance, and the perseverance brings endurance, and that, that brings a proven character. Yeah, that is more precious than gold, <clears throat> and uh, which is sort of sad. And again, the hope in that because most of the church is after the gold. Yeah, we sh it's not strange. Yeah, that's what Peter says. Hey, why do you think this is strange? Why Why do you think this is? And don't we do that? We think well, somebody they must not be living right because they're going through this persecution, and nothing could be further from the truth. So he tells us, don't Peter did. Don't be surprised when you enter into a fiery ordeal. Keep on doing what? Rejoicing. Yeah, oh shit, when we don't understand, we reject it. Why do we not understand, Lynn? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, well that's the reason right there, Rachel. It's because the, the body of Christ doesn't know the word. They don't study the word of God. And I'll tell you what, I really do. I get so excited. Seriously, I had three just amazing little encounters today by people who... Uh, one of them was a, a lady that's actually on staff at the church right here. She said, I'm, she's her, uh, works with our children's stuff. It's actually uh, Charlene's daughter, Lynn. She's uh, She works with the kids here. She's very good at it. She really is. And she ducked in and she just had a question. She said, I just got a question right here, but I want you to tell me the answer to it. And she, afterwards, I said, I'm sorry I took so long. She said, oh, no, no, no. I knew when I came in here that I would get an answer <laughs> because we talked 45 minutes. But it was related to angels, and if angels could be male and female, because there's something that she's wanting to do with the kids, and she, you know, just a, a really sincere, innocent question like that, you know. And she was so excited about some of the things that we talked about, and I said, I'll send you some information. So I sent her some stuff a little while later that's going to rock her world related to what the words. But you can just see it in their eyes when they hear the truth of the word that they're able to talk about it, you know, and ask questions about it. But there's portions of the body of Christ. I'm hoping it's the body of Christ, what Rachel's talking about. They can say if you have faith, you're going to have all the money you want. You won't have any problems. Uh, you won't be sick, and nothing bad's going to happen to you. And that seems to sort of go against what the Scripture says in these passages we're looking at. Right. 
Okay, y'all, are y'all still there? If I just totally, uh, you know, knocked you out, bored you to death right there. Yeah, okay, there you go. Great. So what's he saying? Let endurance have its perfect result. What's that perfect result going to be? You're going to be perfect and complete. Are you ready? Lacking in nothing. Well, what's he talking about there? Uh, what if you don't have a house? What if you don't have a nice car? What if you don't have a, any money in the bank? What if you don't have any food? That's it, Rachel. You're relying on the Lord. And the lacking in nothing is the idea that um, you're trusting the Lord in the midst of it. Okay? And you look at your friends. I mean, we, you know, you've got friends that are have, let's say, financial resources. That's something that's often a distraction, you know? And yet, uh, you know, I, I've got some that just have resources like you wouldn't believe, but they've never had children for whatever reason. Or they have financial resources and their kids don't want to have anything to do with them. Probably the greatest resource that I have is the fact that, for well, right now I can say this pretty, that all four of my girls love me. Okay? I, they don't always behave like I think they should. And they probably also say that daddy doesn't behave like he should <laughs> sometimes. But is that not more precious than gold, you know? And so the idea being that we're not going to lack in anything substantive that we need in the kingdom in this life. And Jesus taught that over in the Sermon on the Mount. Why are you anxious over this stuff? You know, the birds of the field, the fly, uh, uh, flowers of the field, the birds of the air. The Lord's going to provide for us. He meets our need. Our biggest problem is our greed. But if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and with that reproach, and it will be given to him. Why that sort of shift right there into wisdom? What do you think is going on there? Or is it just me that thinks that's sort of a shift? <laughs> what do y'all think? Uh, boy, is that not great, Rachel? You know, God actually uh, <clears throat> dealt with me over something like that years and years ago and continues to deal with me over that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the richest people in the world don't own anything, right? They don't really own anything. Uh, they put them in trust and do all this kind of stuff. Uh, they structure their nest. That's right. But it is still them. And yeah, Lynn, I think that's what's going on right here. He's letting them know, yes, I know you have trials. I know you have tribulations. I know you, but if you lack wisdom, in other words, if you don't know what to do in this trial, in this tribulation, in this person, if you don't know what to do when your goofy computer and Wi-Fi system is acting up, count it all joy, just decide you're going to press on, and in a minute, somebody's going to say something that's going to stimulate your mind to the solution. That's what just happened to us a while ago. <laughs> you know, the wisdom will be brought forth. It, it is, yeah. It, it, seeking the mind of the Lord, the wisdom of the Lord in the midst of it will keep you where you need to be on this. And he says, if you, la if you lack the wisdom, and I love that, it's just the fact that we're acknowledging, God, I don't know what to do. You're acknowledging that you lack the wisdom. And then he says, oh, that's easy. Ask God. Yeah. Well, speak for yourself, Jan Clink. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. You know, we're absolutely, and we always say, that, well, you know, I'm glad to say that people are saying this less and less, but I remember growing up, all I ever heard was, well, all we can do is pray about it. And as a kid, that used to bother me to death. And I didn't quite know. We, yeah, Jan, we eventually get to God after we get over ourselves. And, and that's it. That's, that's so true. That's so true. So he's saying this. Hey, ask God, and God will do what? After walking around the mountain 40 years in. 
and he'll give generously. He'll give, and he's not going to give just a little bit. He's going to give generously. And something else, which I found really interesting. Give generously and why? Without reproach. You know, Rachel, I think I like that. Yeah, Jan, I think that's it. Uh, the King James says, and upbraideth not. I sort of like that, you know. Uh, without reproach, the two middle ones there. Without reservation and not reproaching. Yeah, in other words, he's not just going to tell you off and chew you out about it. Say, what do you mean? You know, or something like this. Well, I'm glad you finally got around to me. <clears throat> no, God is far more loving and generous than that. And he says, you know, he's going to give it. But how must he ask? Hmm. You must ask must ask in faith. You must ask for wisdom in faith. What did y'all learn about wisdom? You chased a couple of cross-references around. When you were first looking at them, you probably thought, what is this all about? Out of Romans chapter 11, then over in Daniel, and uh, was it Job 2, I think we looked up? What did you learn about wisdom from those? Yeah, he's going to give, and the generously that he's going to give is that which we need, and likely abundance thereof. Okay? And so I'm probably, he's going to probably have to give me a whole lot more than he's going to have to give Lynn because Lynn is so wise through the decades to start with. Yeah, God's wisdom is unsearchable and literally is deeper than anything we can understand. That's it, tremendously deep. And the Daniel 2 passage and Job passage talks about how um, that wisdom comes from God. Yeah, we, we can't measure it. And, you know, why why do we sit there and think, well, you know, I can handle this and I'll get to God later. He wouldn't understand. But it's interesting. Uh, he must ask in faith without doubting. And that without doubting is probably not the best type of phrase right there. Uh, uh, Kimmy's writing something on my Facebook post right there, on my Facebook page. Jan, can you jump over and see what's going on with her? I noticed she fell off a while ago. She might have been driving along. I don't know. <laughs> it really, the King James is pretty good on that. Uh, without wavering. Okay, I know what it means by doubting. But you keep pressing on. For the one that wavers, one that doubts, is like what? The surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So he says, you must ask in faith. So Lynn says, what is so comforting? God knows you. Her and where I am in my spiritual walk and the answer is according to my need and not by comparing me to someone. Is that not right? And his whole purpose, and that what we're, that's what we're seeing in this first portion of this first chapter. The whole purpose is what? Uh, to enhance faith, to mature you, absolutely. To grow us more in Christ likeness, to where we won't be wishy-washy and talk, tossed here and there. Someone who does ask, but they're not asking in faith, they're asking in doubt, ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Well, that pretty much cuts to the chase, doesn't it? Do you ever ask and do you ever intercede and wonder if you're really doing it by faith or if you're being wishy-washy? Or what's described here as a double-minded? So, he says in verse 7, For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a what? A double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We know how to pray. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go, Jan. Yeah. Yeah, Ephesians used a similar type of thing, not being grounded in the faith put faith in the wrong thing. You can put faith in religion. Here, the whole idea of being double-minded, what does that mean? Did we look that up? What does that word mean? Two minds wavering. Well, there you go. Uh, dipsukas. Or, uh, di, diasukas. That's, that means two. It's really diasukas. Uh, go down here to the Zodiades. Double-minded, doubtful, referring to the doubt or waver. Yeah, so that's it's what it means. In other words, their mind is in two places. 
No, you can't. You can't, uh, so Rachel says, can't progress in two minds. Been there. <laughs> That's my battles. I tend to live from my mind rather than the spirit. It's very much like trying to ride two horses at the same time. And it, you see the picture all the way through. Uh, you can't be a believer and be of the mind like this and be of the world. Okay? That's what he's talking about. But then the next word is what? Verse 9. You know, in the New American Standard, it says, but. Okay? So, Lynn wants to know, faith with doubting, is that really faith? What saith y'all? More hearer than a doer. Oh, I like that understanding. You know, I have to just rest back in that great example we have out of the Gospels when the man looks at Jesus and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Is there different levels of faith? Saving faith? Maturing faith? Uh, I think, I don't even want to quantify, uh, quantify it like, levels of faith or degrees of faith it goes back to what Lynn said up earlier that it's that the Lord knows exactly where we are right at this point in time and it may take a tremendous amount of faith for one person to do the same thing that another person can, just does in the natural you know and it doesn't take any faith whatsoever and, and that's it the Lord matures us shows us uh, a faith well, what is faith We looked that up. There we go. Pistis. Oh, yeah, quoting Hebrews 11 at us. Yeah. Assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Let, let me tell you, I meant to say this at the beginning, but now's a good time. Uh, this week, when I sat down to uh, just look at this lesson and prepare for our time together tonight, I'm reading through that first chapter of James. And it's like, I mean, I, I was so distracted and nearly rattled because I felt like I was reading the wrong thing. I felt like I was reading the wrong book. Like I'm studying the wrong book that we're actually doing the class on. Because when I'm reading it, it was like I'd never read it before. And I thought, wait a minute, I know we read the whole book last week several times. I know I've been through this, but I literally feel like I have never read all of this before. Have y'all ever had that happen? It's just a, it was the weirdest thing. And I finally just decided, okay, Lord, I, you must be resetting my mind and my eyes. <clears throat> yes, oh, there you go, Carol. And that's what I finally had to decide. But I really felt like I was studying the wrong lesson. And, you know, it was just the strangest thing, you know. Yeah, Rachel felt like it was all doer, doer, doer. <clears throat> but it did. It's it so... Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm out of words on how to describe how I felt so discombobulated <clears throat> on that. And this lasted for about uh, 30 or 45 minutes. <clears throat> I mean, I actually went back and checked my calendar. No, we're doing James. This is the James study. No, we did that lesson last week. I remember that. We read all this last week. I know I've read this. I've taught James two or three times before. I know I've read this. I'm re it's like I haven't seen this before. And I finally decided to receive that as a blessing. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rachel, as I said, the God and his wisdom. So what, what's he doing? You were so concerned about the doer, 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 that now he's saying, oh, why don't you just let me show you some wisdom in the midst of this? Yeah, I mean, but it caught me so off guard, you know? And so that's the reason I'm sort of examining all these words. Okay, I knew that the word faith was pissed us, okay? But what does that really mean, you know? And I think the Lord's sort of guiding us in those things. So anyway, the double-minded man is not really living by faith. He says he is, but he's got his feet in the world. And that person is unstable in his ways. Why is he unstable? Because he's walking in the world. Yeah, I mean, these little word study vignettes are just phenomenal.
So helpful. And then the New American Standard comes along and throws this but in there. You notice the other three translations don't say but. They say, let the brother, or now let the brother. And that's a little nuance right there, because that, that but right there sort of carries like a conjunction from the previous idea. And it is there. Okay, Well, that's the most powerful word in Scripture. It can be good or it can be bad. Okay? Uh, Rachel said, verse 9 was left out of left field on the statement now. Yeah, yeah, it's connected. What he's doing, he's showing them an example. Okay, an example. So it says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, or let the brother of humble circumstances is the glory in his high position. Well, what's the humble circumstances? Well, you read the rest of the sentence. And the rich man is the glory in his, hum in his humiliation, because like flowering grass, he will pass away. You know, it's just so quickly. Uh, literally, we're experiencing that in our life right now. We've had four people that have gone to glory the last two weeks. And uh, so you realize that he's talking about those who are trusting in their riches. The one that is in humble circumstances. And, you know, there are those of us that are in humble circumstances in comparison maybe to the society that we're living in. But, uh, Lynn, will you not tell us that each and every one of us are 99%, richer than 99% of the people uh, that have ever lived? I mean, you just spent weeks in a situation like that, you know, to where you realize, you know, just... And if you've ever been anywhere to where you've had a hurricane or a tornado or you've had to do without, just the fact you can flip a switch and have light, uh, that's one thing. I could live without electricity. The fact that you can turn a knob and get water to come out of it. <laughs> if We've had three or four times in our life where we've had to go a week or two without water because it was happened with... Uh, ice storms and tornado and to have that oh but what's the commandment those that are in these humble circumstances are to do what yeah they're the glory yeah <laughs> camping <laughs> once a year makes you think uh, we're going to have a 20 year old next Sunday tell us of her experience in Nepal on a mission trip oh, that's interesting yeah, they're the glory in their high position. You know, quite often we sit there and somebody who's humble in the circumstance, we think that they must be doing something wrong or God will be blessing them more and more. And it's really the opposite of all that. So, and the rich man is to do what? <coughs> glory in his humiliation. What does that word mean? Humiliation. Did we look that up? His humble position, his humble state. Okay. In other words, God, there's some that God blesses with riches of the world. There's some that are humble within that. And we are to realize that it's all like flower and grass passing by. But the sun does what? <clears throat> Rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass and the flower falls off. And the beauty of his appearance and disappear. It's destroyed. So too, the rich man in the midst of his pursuit will fade away. What's the operative phrase there? Yeah, both have the same Heavenly Father. It's all God's, yeah. The thing is, if the rich man is pursuing, see, pursuing the riches, it's the motivation of your heart. Some of the godliest people I know are some of the wealthiest people I know. Okay? And the thing is, that God's given the spiritual gift of giving. Okay? He's empowered them to do that. And since he's given the gift of giving, what has what he given in their lives? He's given the resources whereby to do that. Okay, And you chased around the scriptures, you know, related in, uh, in Acts 2 and Acts 4 and 1 Corinthians, that the body of Christ consists of those who have no means whatsoever and those that have all sorts of means. Okay? The body of Christ and in the body of Christ, we are all equal. So verse 12, and we'll stop right here. This is sort of where we stop, I think, in the lesson. And we'll do the balance of the chapter next week's lesson. So he says this, blessed is the man who perseveres. Notice how he started off with trials in verse 2, and now he's picking up with trials again in verse 12. So that sort of gives us the idea that everything he's talked about here with the riches and all that is all in the context of trials. So the man who perseveres under trial, for, for once he has been approved, in other words, once he's been tried, King James, once he's been tested, ESV, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. What does that tell us? 
Will we know whether we are approved here on earth or in heaven? <laughs> well, I guess the question is, when do we receive the crown of life? Uh, yeah, after we're out of these bodies. So from once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. <clears throat> That's the reason I can sit there and tell you, okay, the uh, particularly my friend that died a week ago today, I can tell you that she has been approved because now she's gone from this body to that. The crown of life hasn't been received yet. You see sort of the time of that in other scriptures, okay? But your approval has come. And it's not that you're working for your salvation to attain this salvation. You're living under these testings. You're living under these trials. This actually shows us that, oh, there you go. <laughs> I was about to say that. Rachel said it. It takes a lifetime to prove our faith. It's a lifetime thing. It's something that we're to realize, hey, this is going to be going on. This is going to be happening. So count it all joy, folks. Persevere in the midst of it. Rejoice in everything that happens because it's all to God's glory and to his praise and to the building up of faith and endurance and our trust in him in our own lives. Okay, And he says this. He said, uh, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Uh, I, I think it's a great understanding that we so, so need to see because uh, the kingdom of God is being sold as a bill of goods in so many portions of the body of Christ. That's the reason you don't hear a lot of teaching and preaching out of passages like this right here. And there's three or four passages, you know, that we've looked up uh, that lay out these uh, things of persevering in the midst of thing, of doing this, of doing that. So... Anyway, I think we'll stop right here. And thank you for going a little long because we got started a little long. Y'all got anything you want to share? I just looked up and saw what time it was. Sorry. <laughs> Whew. Well, Lord, we thank you. And we thank you for how you have spoken to us. Lord, I thank you for that uh, resetting of the cash within so many of us of being able to look at the scripture in the way that you want to reveal to us right now and uh, even bringing that confusion into my mind and that just uh, whole thing about what's going on here the resetting uh, whatever you, you want to call it Lord I thank you for that and I pray Lord that you continue to do that in all of our lives and that we will see your word uh, renewed refresh anew and not only see it and not only be hearers and learners but doers of it we thank you Lord and bless you in Jesus name Amen Thank y'all. Love you. See you next time, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>